Welcome to Dance Talks. Uh, my guest today on the podcast is Bill Boggs, television host, journalist, movie star, which I didn't know that much about, which I I'll didn't, about, and book author. <laughs> And uh, we'll get back to movie star because it's not actually as, as movie star as it might be. However, it's 10 or at least a dozen movies he's been in. I didn't know that. But let's talk about books. Um, uh, you, you t- Tell me about the first book and how the new book, when is that due to come out? And uh, what, what is the relationship of the two? Well, the, the first book was called The Adventures of Spike the Wonder Dog, and we talked about it about three years ago. By the way, it's published by Post Hill Press, and the president, Anthony, Anthony Zaccardi, lives in East Hampton. And I am speaking to you right now, then, from an undisclosed location somewhere in East Hampton. Do you uh, have to my book? What is, how is that possible? Well, it, it, it's just where I am. <laughs> the, what, what I did in the first book, Spike the Wonder Dog, narrates the story. And he is looking at human foibles and looking at our crazy society with our celebrity obsessions, our, cra- our media. And Spike becomes, together with his master, who is a talk show host like me, uh, a very big social media and television star. And The Adventures of Spike the Wonder Dog, the first book, is just introducing him. He's just getting housebroken at this point. You know, he's, he's not a puppy anymore, but He's a very young dog. By the end of the book, he's a little more mature. Uh, in that book, he was kidnapped in, in the denouement of the book and had to fight for his life. But the book is a, it's, it's, it's pure comedy. The book is designed, I began my career, unbeknownst to many, in the field of comedy, managing a very successful comedy team and writing for them and producing shows with them and the stage shows primarily. And then I got sidetracked into wanting to be a talk show host. So I've gone back to my roots, essentially, in comedy to create the Avengers of Spike the Wonder Dog. And I planted seeds in the first book that would lead to this. This is Spike Unleashed, The Wonder Dog Returns. And this book is out now, Amazon or orderspike.com. Linda Stacy said, I thought I'd have to be hospitalized from laughing so hard. My objective with this is to send up society, to satirize society. It's it's pure, hard-hitting, absurdist humor and satire told through the vantage point of a dog. As Bill Maher said to me when I told him about the book, he said, oh, this is great. You can offend anybody and blame it on a dog, right? So that's what we're doing right now. The Adventures of Spike the Wonder Dog has morphed into Spike Unleashed, the Wonder Dog Returns. Has, has grown up and noticed what's going on around him. What's going on around Spike? Yes. Well, uh, the book opens, uh, Spike and Bud, his master, live in High Point. Uh, it, the journey of this book takes them to Manhattan for a period of time, then down to Palm Beach. Spike gets cast in a movie called Florida Man. Uh, the cast includes Tim Allen, Lucy Arnaz, um, Kate McKinnon, Jim Carrey, and Prince Harry playing a heavily tattooed Florida man because it turns out that Prince Harry has a clause in his Netflix contract that gives him the ability to play one character against type a year in a movie somewhere. And his (laughs) wife liked the idea of Florida man because she goes shopping in Palm Beach. So there's a whole thing in Palm Beach. And then from Palm Beach, we come back through New York and the book concludes the last quarter of the book is um, set here in East Hampton, where I'm talking to you right now. There's a play going on at Guild Hall called Pardon My Privet. Spike gets cast in that, but his nemesis, Ike, I Got Money Piles, who was in the first book, <laughs> ends up abducting Spike's father and Bud. So there's a lot of action in it. It, fo- it, it follows, it's it almost like, Spike is almost like a cross between a Jim Carrey character and a Sylvester Stallone character in, in the same book, all designed to make you laugh, Dan. If you ever read it, you will laugh. I guarantee you your money back. By the way, Little Spike says hello. This is hello, kind of Little Spike. Spike in English. This is Little Spike. Goes with me everywhere. He's actually a bank, 
And the first person, of course, to buy 100 copies of Spike Unleashed will get a free Spike, little Spike. Right. This has not happened yet, nor do I think it will. That's why I'm offering my only little Spike as a gift. Are you going to be doing any readings? Uh, of the book or interviews in bookstores? Oh, no, yeah, I don't want to read the book. Man. I mean, I can if you want, but I don't have anything picked out. Um, I'd come if you do it. That'd be just me, but I would do it. Well, let's see. Let's see oh. where we go. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, these are people who have, um, let's see. These are the people, when, when Ike, I got money piles, got arrested at the end of the last book. And he's been in jail. He's coming out of jail and he's extracting revenge on Spike. So this is a conversation. Um, this is a conversation, it'd be what they did to, to, Spike, to Bud. What'd you do so far, Piles asked her. Well, we hit Bud hard financially. He had identity theft working for a while. We, he spent, we spent tens of thousands of his money at sex resorts. We docked his bank accounts. We drove him nuts with credit card hanging. We drugged the wonder dog at the Carney, Colony Hotel in Florida. Spike looked like a cowardly fool. Inside edition showed the video. People thought he'd lost it. Okay, good, but that dog, he'd be fool anyway. He'd gonna lose it. What else? Well, it wasn't easy. We were able to remote control program a huge mechanical alligator with very soft, sharp teeth to crush him to death. But somehow something went wrong and Spike and the alligator ended up having dinner with Tim Allen and Jim Carrey in Palm Beach. What? Piles yells. I hire mean old Zodokoff Associates, not a dog and celebrities matchmaking service. What the fuck else you do? Anyway, it goes on and on. So that sets up for the reader, those things have happened. And that sets up what's going to happen next. There's a lot of action. And it all centers around, well, not all of it, a lot of it centers around a play that Bud and Spike are cast in that's going to be a guild hall, a play written by Bill McCuddy, who's a real life person and a friend of mine. And the play, I love this title I came up with, Pardon My Privet. It's just a perfect play for East Hampton with all the priv privets and everything. So that 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 is a element. It's difficult, I found it difficult to describe plot things in the book. What I like to tell people is, uh, it's like a, a roller coaster ride of laughs. It's going in all different directions. We've had Brian Cox, you know, the actor from Succession. This, he read the book He's got, and he said, quote, the book is an absolute delight in such a brilliantly acerbic comic manner. Mike Reese, the um, creator and still producer of The Simpsons said, Bill's written an amazingly funny book and so hip. Uh, we know Alan's Y. Bell, the server of prize winning author said, this book is great. I'm standing and applauding right now. So uh, we've gotten good approbations, which is, you know, Dan, as a writer, you know, when I'm writing comedy, a stand-up comedian can go and get on stage and test his material that night. But as a writer of satire and absurdist humor, I have to kind of have an own, an own recept my receptors in my head thinking, that's funny, that, no, cut this, add a little more here. And not until like almost two years later, Dan, writing the book, do I actually get feedback from people that, that, that you know, essentially that codifies what I think, that no, this is funny. I, you know, I read, some, I read it a little bit as I'm going along. I have three people I send material to. What do you think of this? And uh, so that I can test it a little bit. But until you're finished writing, you really don't know what you've got. You, you know that you're a terrific writer. So, so well, thank you. Tell me, tell me about uh, what what you you've been in all these movies. Tell me about one or two. I have. I have. Yeah, it's uh, a <laughs> Uh, the last one I auditioned, for, I, I had a, a track record of getting every part I ever auditioned for, but I was auditioning for small parts as a sort of talk show host, a newscaster, and playing myself. The last two I auditioned for, I didn't get, and I thought, well, I'm probably too old looking now. They, they want like a younger person. Well, the first movie I was in was Eyes of Laura Mars. 
And in that movie, guess what? I played a newsman interviewing people and had one scene with the Faye Dunaway. And then the most interesting one was Trading Places. Now, Trading Places is a pretty iconic movie. Um, what the heck's the name of the director? Oh, John Landis. Thank you, Brain. John <laughs> Landis um, was on Midday. And I was interviewing him about something. And he had just gone through an unsuccessful shoot with a, a guy, an actor playing a newscaster. And he told me that, I said, look, I can do that for you in one take, but set up a teleprompter. What do you mean? I said, just set up a teleprompter under the camera and I'll read it like it's a newscast. He said, that's, that's a good idea. So um, the next two days later, I went to this little set. I was kind of nervous, you know, not, not my normal bag, so to speak. They get me down. and lighting and makeup, all this stuff. I'm sitting there saying, I can do this, giving myself pie, you know, and bing, okay. Then they clap the thing and I go, well, the storm system that's coming up from Florida now is uh, really ruining the crop, blah, blah, blah. And Landa says, that was one take. I said, yeah, you, you want me to do it again? No, he said, you got it in one take. And then one time, I was on Miami Vice, again, playing a newscaster. This is the one that was directed by, directed by Don Johnson, the star, and it also had Melanie Griffith, his former wife, in it. Anyway, I was in a meeting with Boggs Baker Productions that somebody about a show we were producing. This is when I was still doing Midday. And I checked, I went outside, and I checked my phone answering service. They say, call blah, 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 some agent. So I called the agent, and the agent said, Don Johnson wants you in Miami tomorrow. He can't find a guy to play a newscaster. And Melanie was on your show, and Melanie says you'd be great. Okay. I go back into the meeting. I said, guys, I got to leave. I'm going to Florida now to be on the Miami Voice. So there's three stories. There's a couple more, but they're, they're the big ones then. That's good. Um, but when you, you were a television host, did you, do, did you interview people, correct? Yeah, I, uh, I, up until 2016, when my last show, which is called My Generation, went off the air, and there's a lot of those shows are on my YouTube channel, Bill Boggs TV. I've got 500 videos from, from interviews, and some of them, like the one with Carly Simon, like people love it for whatever reason. We connected. Yeah, I essentially, Dan, I started my career in Philadelphia after I left the Patch and Tarsus, the comedy team. And I was on once a week playing Mr. Weekend on a morning talk show. And I wanted to get my own talk show. And I made a New Year's resolution. I went to High Point, North Carolina, where Spike and Bud live in the book. A lot of the book shadows my life, right? And I had a show down there, Southern Exposure with Bill Boggs, was syndicated in the South. It was up against the Today Show. We beat the Today Show. It was a really... We had a wonderful general manager there, my uh, Richard Baker, who went on to manage Tim Allen and Drew Carey, and we had Boggs Baker Productions. He was he was associate producer and another woman. Just two people and me. We ran we ran the show. Then I went up to New York and for 13 years, midday live, 90 minutes of live television, five days a week, and on and on. I was at Food Network 10 years, Bill Boggs corner table interviewing people. And my generation for PBS was the last show. Uh, I also, believe it or not, I worked for Showtime covering boxing, not blow by blow, but interviewing fighters and, and celebrities ringside. So you put a, my mother told me, Dan, I don't remember this. My mother told me when I was a little boy, I used to walk around the house with a pencil, pretending it was a microphone, interviewing people. For well, as long you know. as I can remember, I've wanted to be an interviewer of people and a, and a, a television, a radio television personality. As long as I can remember, there was never anything else I wanted to do. Where were you? Uh, where were you raised? New York. I grew up in Northeast Philadelphia, the city that's having some major problems these days with the horrible drugs and and, and gun violence. I, I grew up in Philadelphia. Went to. Um, Lincoln High School, huge, great school. Then on to the University of Pennsylvania. I got an undergraduate master's degree there. 
And I still bleed Phillies red. My friends, the, the Mets fans hate me for that, but I do. And then started my career in Philadelphia and moved to High Point and to New York. And essentially, you, I identify as a Philadelphian who lives in New York um, pretty much since I moved to New York. since Before you were born, Dan, I moved there in 1975, long time ago. <laughs> Good luck with that. I wish yeah, <laughs> I've, I've well, given I'm it. Glad. I've prepared this. I've prepared <laughs> this for you. I've prepared this. You know, it doesn't look bad, actually. <laughs> I've prepared this for you, pal. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, boy. Oh, well. Um, thank you for being on this program. I really appreciate it. And, oh, Dan, uh, you're terrific. I, you know, you're a beloved man. And one time I'd like to talk to you when we're not on, we're not on a podcast. Actually, sit down out here some days and you just have to buy hats off to you and all the good work you've done in your life as an entrepreneur in publishing. Come on over. Come on over. I'll invite you over sometime. We'll talk and chat. Now. I'd like that. I'd like that. Okay. Thanks. See you. Thank you.